Hey everyone, today I will be reviewing episode 5 of Miss Marvel. I've been really enjoying the series so far, and that's why I'm disappointed to say that I did not love this episode. There were parts of it that really worked, and parts of it that really didn't. This is definitely the weakest episode of the series so far, and the perfect example of why the six episode format just does not work. But let's start by mentioning the good stuff before I get into my recap of the plot. First of all, visually this episode looked really good. The cinematography and production design both stood out. Director Charmino Bay Chinoy did a great job capturing the scale and the magnitude of partition. I loved the use of wide shots, showing people leaving their homes in crowd shots with the fires lighting the way. All of that just looked really stunning and was effective at showing the horror of this event of partition. Let's also talk about the performances. First of all, I think it's Mewish Hayat and Fawad Khan as Aisha and Hassan were both great. They had great chemistry and in a really short period of time, totally sold their character's relationship, their character's love. I really bought them as a couple. Um, the entire first half of the episode with them in the past was by far my favorite part. I loved learning about the history of the Khan family and it was all very compelling, very well done. Nimra Bucha as Najma is also great. Most of my issues with the episode and with the show as a whole come from the Jin and come from her character, but none of that is the actor's fault. Her performance is always solid, and she's clearly doing everything she can to elevate the subpar material she's given. Um, but of course, there's only so much a performer can do, and we'll talk about that later. The final two I want to mention for this episode are Zenobia Shroff and Samina Ahmed as Muniba and Sana Khan. They are both absolutely fantastic. Their dialogue and interaction with each other is great. Um, Zenobia Shroff especially just really stands out to me. Her performance throughout the entire show so far has just been phenomenal. It's really, really good. And it's one of those performances where I can't quite put my finger on what it is about her specifically that stands out. Maybe her line delivery or her speech cadence or something. But she's just really great, and I hope to see more of her and the Khan family in the future after this show is over. The rest of the cast that I didn't mention continues to be great as well. Iman Vellani is fantastic. All the supporting characters are very well cast. Moving on from that, let's now get into my recap of the plot. We start out with the Marvel Studios logo, which turns black and white, leading into this, I guess, sort of history lesson on the partition using real footage from that time. I absolutely love this. I love history. I love when media teaches me about areas of history I didn't know about. So I totally ate this all up. It provides great background, great context for the story we're about to see. That was great. The music here also just really stood out. The score of the show and the soundtrack perfectly complement every scene. They really nailed that aspect of the show and it just stands out episode after episode. Picking up directly after the flashback from episode three, Aisha's being chased by the British. She throws her knife, kills one. We cut to the opening titles. She's hiding out in a village where she sees Hassan giving a speech about taking their land back from the British. The British come, shut that down. Aisha and Hassan meet, have a great conversation where he invites her inside. She eventually accepts his offer. They start talking. There's a time jump. We see that Aisha's pregnant. Time jump again, Sana is born. Aisha sings a song to Sana and then time jump again and Sana is a toddler. So this show literally goes from first meeting to having a toddler in a span of like five minutes. But surprisingly, it really works. They sell it really well, which is a huge testament to the direction, the script, and uh, especially these two actors who have to sell this entire relationship in only a few scenes. So I really loved all this. I thought it was quite actually beautifully done, and it was definitely the highlight of the episode. Next up, somebody shows up at the door. There's a great conversation showcasing kind of the growing unrest and tension happening during that time period. Aisha sees Najma outside, goes to talk to her. Najma says it's time to go home, and Aisha has 24 hours to get the bangle. Aisha's rushing the family to get packed. They have to go. She wants them to leave on one of the trains to Pakistan. She convinces Hassan, and they go. He confronts Aisha on the path, which, by the way, just looked really stunning. The cinematography of seeing all these people walking on the path really stood out. And she reveals her powers to him, makes him promise to get Sana on that train. If I had to criticize something, I would say that Hassan accepts Aisha's magic a little too quickly. 
but that's not a big deal at all. And the entire conversation surrounding that one small moment is fantastic. Aisha then sees Najma behind her, sends Hassan forward with Sana. She confronts Najma, and this is where the episode starts to go downhill for me. Najma stabs Aisha for betraying her, and this happened way too quickly and felt out of nowhere. I was under the impression that they had been working together for hundreds or maybe thousands of years to get home, and that Najma wouldn't just stab her partner so quickly. I was expecting at least some more of a conversation first, um, and this really speaks to the larger issue with the storytelling of this show and with the Jin as villains. We really don't know anything about them. What are their relationships with each other? How close are they? Are they friends? Do they not care about each other? Why do they want to go home? Why were they even exiled from their home in the first place? That's a huge one that they haven't even addressed. How long have they been looking for a way home? There's a ton of things that really needed to be addressed, which just weren't. And this is kind of the problem with reviewing a show weekly. One week, I'll say something is good and interesting and I like it, but then I have to take that back the next week once we get more of the full picture. I said in my previous reviews of this show that I was intrigued by the gin. I wanted to know more, more backstory, more development, but that just didn't come. And now that we have the complete story of them and we know everything that happened to them, I can say that overall, they just really did not work as villains. They were extremely underdeveloped and just honestly kind of sucked. They are definitely by far the weakest part of this show and among the worst MCU villains. Like these guys are down there with Malekith for me. So now that that's out of the way, let's move on with the story. Najma stabs Aisha. Sana and Hassan get separated. Sana gets lost in the crowd. Aisha summons Kamala. Aisha gives Kamala the picture and Kamala saves Sana with platforms and then the trail of stars. This moment I loved story-wise. I love that Kamala is the one who saves her great-grandma. My issues with this sequence just come with the direction, which I feel like hold the scene back from being truly great. This is a very good scene that could have been great if the execution was just a little bit better. First of all, one thing that kind of bugged me was how did Kamala find Aisha so quickly in that huge crowd? Uh, I wish they showed some explanation for that because Kamala suddenly showing up, recognizing immediately and seeing Aisha just broke the sense of verisimilitude for me. Secondly, when Kamala creates the trail of stars, it felt a little bit, it's weird to say this because it is a great moment, but it felt a little lackluster to me. I wish they had shot that in a way that emphasizes the wonder of that moment a little bit more. I wanted to hold on that moment more, I think. And I wanted a shot from Sana's perspective, looking up at the stars or something. That scene has been built up so much throughout the show that it just didn't deliver as much as it could have or should have. So I kind of wanted more from it. But I will say what we got was great. I just wanted more of it. Last but not least, I know there was a lot of confusion about the way it was shot because it wasn't clear if Kamala or Sana was creating the stars. I thought it was Kamala, but it really could be either one. It's ambiguous and I don't think they meant it to be ambiguous. I think that should have been, or I wish that was shot in a way which made it more clear where the stars were coming from. Next up, uh, Sana is now reunited with Hassan. They ride off on the train. Kamala is now back in the present day, and here's where my real issues start. Previously, I loved everything that happened story-wise, but just had issues with the execution of it. Now I have problems with the story too, with what actually happens. Everything just goes way too fast. In earlier weekly reviews, I have said that I really like the fast pace of the show. Now that I know um, where that leads, I take that all back. This show is going way too fast and not spending the time to properly develop and flesh things out. They're trying to jam so much story into six episodes, and this is where we really see that. So we start with a charming scene where Muniba is looking for her daughter. She learns that she can track her phone. That was cool. Back with Kamala, the rift in the veil between dimensions is open. Why is it open? How did it open? Not explained. One of the djinn tries to go through, instantly dies in this really gruesome way. Why did she die? Why did the rift kill her? Not explained. After seeing her partner die, Najma still decides to go through. Why? Not explained. Kamala tries to convince her not to go. Najma is reminded of Kamran, and I guess she decides to sacrifice herself to close the rift. She abandons her mission of thousands of years that she killed her best friend for because she's reminded of her son, who she had no problem leaving behind in prison earlier. 
So none of that makes any sense to me. Then she dies. The main villain of the series dies. The rift closes. And then somehow energy goes into Comrade over in Jersey City and he gets powers. How did she know how to close the rift? How did she know how to give Comrade powers? Why did she want to give him powers? Did she even mean to give him powers? How do the powers work? What are the powers? It doesn't make any sense. And it's not even worth trying to break down. This entire sequence is more than rushed. It's like a breakneck pace in the absolute worst way. We barely got any scenes with Kamran and his mom. Their relationship wasn't developed at all. So when she suddenly decides to give up her life's mission for him, it makes no sense and feels so out of the blue. All of this was just extremely underdeveloped and rushed. This scene is just so messy and nonsensical that I still don't know what happened. There are things that are just not explained and I don't think will ever be explained. And I just, I, I'll flat out say it. I kind of hated this entire sequence. I think it was terrible. It was just very, very poorly done on multiple levels. And I was extremely disappointed. And the storytelling problems of this series didn't just come out of nowhere. They were there in earlier episodes. The extremely rushed storytelling was there but I forgave it since it hadn't gotten too bad yet. And I wanted to see where it would go if they would correct it. But now that I see where it leads, where it was going, it did not work at all. The whole, I guess, superhero plot line with the Jin just did not work. And it's definitely the weakest part of the show. So let's move on from that. Muniba and Sana now find Kamala and discover that she has powers. Some people on the internet have been saying that Muniba goes from hating the superpowers to loving and supporting Kamala way too quickly. I see where they're coming from, but I disagree. I think it's been well established that Muniba loves her daughter more than anything and will support her no matter what. So it just works for me within her characterization that suddenly she loves the powers once she discovers that it's her daughter who has them. I really like that turn for the character. And I think Muniba kind of starting to be more understanding and nice to her daughter all of a sudden also makes sense because I think that was established in the last episode. Um, we see that Muniba regrets her relationship with her own mom. And I think the conversation with her own mom is the turning point where she realizes she needs to be different with her daughter. And I think that explains um, why she is suddenly super nice and kind and more supportive to her daughter. Kamala gives Sana the picture, which is a really touching moment. She says goodbye to Red Dagger. He gives her the scarf. Um, we've talked about how this show is about identity. I love how this continues that. Kamala is building her costume as she builds her identity. She has now reconnected with her roots and embraced her identity. She's come to terms with all her various labels, and she's ready to just truly be who she is. She's ready to finally become Miss Marvel. Um, and I love that character arc for her. I like how that was executed. I thought that was a great moment. Muniba finds Kamala's necklace, which is in the shape of the lightning bolt logo. Another great moment. We then get this scene with Sana, Kamala, and Muniba, all three generations together. And this was just such a moving and beautiful scene. We see the reconciliation between Kamala and her mother and between Muniba and her mother. And I just really, really love this scene. It's definitely one of the best in the show. It's really satisfying to see that mother's and daughter's eternal struggle that they mentioned in previous episodes finally come to a close for the Khan family. So that was all great, fantastic character work. Um, definitely one of the best scenes in the episode. Last but not least, I guess Kamran just escaped the high security prison and visits Bruno. Damage control followed him, blows up the Circle Q. All this was fine. I liked it. I will say the final cut to credits after the Circle Q explodes feels a little bit abrupt. Didn't totally work for me, but it's fine. Okay, so that's my recap of the plot. A lot happened in this episode, for better and for worse. I think I pretty much covered everything. As you can tell, I am very mixed on this episode. Um, the beginning, flashbacks, I loved. Saving Sana, I liked, but could have been executed better. Back in present day, with the veil and the gin, terrible, I hated. And then the conclusion with the family um, reconciliation and the character work, I loved. So that's kind of how I feel about the different sections of this episode. Um, what did you think about it? Did you like this episode more than me, less than me, or are you mixed like I am? Let me know in the comments, email, voicemail, or form, and all those links are in the description. Thank you so much for listening and have a good day.